Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today. So I wanted to talk to you about the topic. I had to change how I saw myself in order to move forward. So this is a topic that I think is really important. And it's so funny because originally I titled this message. Sometimes you have to change how you see yourselves in order to move forward. And it's something that I feel like is so so true because the thing is is and i have some notes <laughs> that i have for you all sometimes i you know i go off the top of my head but this time i was really searching seeking the lord to figure out what he wanted me to say and there were so many messages that i had in my spirit that i wanted to make sure that i had everything in order to be able to um share them with you and the first is too often we are captive to other things that we need to shed in order for us to be who God has called us to be and do the work that he has called us to do. And so I wanted to talk specifically and just share my story with you guys in hopes that you will learn from it to be able to recognize some of the same patterns in your life and the things that you need to shed because of those patterns. And so for me, I want to take you on this journey. So for me, my identity was in my accomplishments and who other people said that I was. And so the thing is, the danger in that is that those things are fleeting. Those things are super fleeting. And so you really can't allow yourself to be defined by the perception of men or women, by people, right? And so what happens is, is that can be extremely destructive. And so I wrote a post recently about how I was hiding. I was hiding from the work that God had called me to do. And I was shrink back when God was calling me to move forward because there was an old tape machine, tape player playing in my head, which was the voice of my twin's father. All the negativity, all the word curses, whenever I was at that point where I was ready to move forward, it was like that old tape player would just start downloading these awful messages back into my head. It will cause me to doubt who I was in Christ. It will cause me to doubt my talents. It will cause me to doubt what I promised that I did, right? And so here I am sitting up here showing up, doing transformational work, working with clients, hosting summits, getting deliverance and breakthrough, right? People's lives are being better by working with me, but yet I'm sitting here like shrinking back. I don't know if you can see me like, but just shrieking back and hiding. Whenever God will call me to move forward, like there's this old Paula Abdul song, like, um, oh God, it was like straight up, not tell me, do you want to? And then she was talking about like two steps forward and two steps back. Opposites attract. I think that's the song. <laughs> I think that's the name of the song. And so we have to be danger. And we have to be careful about this and allowing people to be able to speak into our lives because when that happens it shakes our identity and who we are it shakes how we show up it shakes the effectiveness of what it is that god is calling us to do and so this is the this is the interesting thing right my default right when i would find myself in this place where i would shrink back right and i've said a number of a number of times i actually ended up shutting down my business for three years because I didn't feel good enough. I didn't feel qualified. I didn't think that I couldn't understand why I was called by God to do the work that I was doing. And so I thought he made a mistake. So like Jonah, I would just run. I didn't feel like I was qualified enough to do the work that he would call me to do. And in those moments, what I would do naturally is to start reciting my resume. Because that was all I knew in order to be able to have the self-worth or have the self-esteem or to feel good enough or to feel qualified because my resume is a thing that always brought me accolades, right? And so when I felt like I was in a moment of shrinking back, when I felt like I was in a moment of feeling unqualified, I went back to what I knew people had praised me for in, a, in the past 
to be able to justify standing firm and boldly in who I am now. So it would look like I would say, oh, I was featured in Essence Black Enterprise Jet. Um, oh, I was featured in Quicken Loans Blog. Oh, I managed a $1 billion budget in corporate. Oh, I did multiple $100 million restructuring deals. Oh, I did mergers and acquisitions. Oh, I did small business restructuring. Oh, I have a personal, you know, personal financial coaching consultant business consulting, all of those things where people had told me that I was good at, right? And it was so interesting because even as a child, I wanted somebody to give me accolades. I wanted someone to give me praise. And because of that, I found myself in destructive relationships because I was looking for the people who said what I needed to be able to hear in order to feel good about myself because innately, I didn't know who I was outside of who other people were telling me I was. I couldn't tell you. Um, I remember when I got to be an adult, I couldn't tell you what I like to eat because I would let somebody else choose. I couldn't tell you what I like to wear because I would wear the things that other people said looked good on me. I had no idea who I was because I was so focused on blending in, so focused on trying to learn who I was by listening to other people tell me what they saw me reflecting back to them. That was all I knew. And it took some time for me uh, when I was about 27 years old to be able to take time out, to be able to get off uh, what was the club scene for my for me at that point in time, to be able to learn who I was, to be able to learn my likes, learn my dislikes, learn who Aisha was, to be able to do the things that I enjoy, like sitting and nerding out on random stuff, right? <laughs> that other people might be like, well, I don't understand. Like, why would you just enjoy binge watching like, TV shows or, you know, reading series of books. Like, I don't understand, but those are the things that I like wanted to do, but I didn't have the confidence because I didn't know who I was and I was afraid of rejection that if I actually leaned into my identity as an individual. See, I was so afraid of rejection from other people. I was so afraid of mockery of other people. I was so afraid of what people would say if I was living who God had called me to be, if I was my authentic self. I was afraid that that would come with rejection because it was rooted in a traumatic experience when I was 12 and I picked out my own tennis shoes and I wore them into summer camp one day and I got teased for wearing non-name brand shoes and I was face to face with the difference between name brand and non-name brand and what that meant for your family's finances or the perception of your family's finances if you had one or another. And from that moment, it taught me in my 12 year old brain, it taught me that in order to be accepted, that that meant fitting in. But I want you to understand if you're so focused on the acceptance, if you're so focused on fitting in, where are you? Where is your authenticity? Who are you? How can you possibly ever do the work that God has caused you to do if you're so busy spending all your time, energy, and focus trying to blend in instead of figuring out what it is that God has uniquely equipped you with that would cause you to stand out in a world where everybody else is conforming. See, I want you to understand we have to get comfortable with not conforming to who society tells us we should be. And this is why I'm so passionate about helping single moms, because the thing is, society will tell you that as a single mom, that you don't have a future. Your kids don't have a future. You're going to be broke. That you're a mistake. Your kids are a mistake that no man will ever want you. Why? Because that was what I was told when I became a single mom by my kid's father. And see, those types of messages, along with the messages that I had picked up throughout the years about who I was, who I should be, that my accolades define me, and who am I without my accolades, right? That it all caused me to shrink back. 
But I want you to understand is that when you're having an identity crisis, you cannot use your resume or affirmations to be able to get you in the right mindset to be able to have the focus and the wherewithal and the knowledge to know who you are. You need a total and complete reset because what happened with me when those, when those messages of doubt would creep in, when those messages of fear would creep in, when those messages of not feeling good enough would creep in, I would recite my resume over and over and over and over again until I puffed myself up to the point where I felt comfortable enough to move forward and be bold. But it's kind of like almost like a temporary high because when the next arrow comes, is shrink back again. And I was in this constant cycle of showing up, hiding, showing up, hiding, showing up, hiding. Until I realized that what I was doing was temporary. What I was doing wasn't working. I needed to understand who I was. I needed to understand my name. I needed to understand my name. And I don't want you guys to miss this. I don't want you to miss this. We have to understand the power of a name. Because oftentimes we have a name and a promise before we see it in reality. And so the name and is the promise of what we hold on to. And I want you to understand this. Back in biblical times, back in ancient um, Hebrew times, the name was a promise, but it was also a prophecy to prophesy about who that child was going to become. Or it was a reflection on the emotional, mental state, joy, not joy of the mom or the dad when the mom had the child and so we see um and you can see if you ever want to do a name study look at the names of the children of uh of israel of jacob right and you'll be able to see that very very clearly and so we look at abraham it means the father of many right because when god changed changed Abraham's name from Abram to Abraham, it now meant the father of many. It reflected the covenant promise that God made with Abraham. So his name mattered, right? Your name matters, right? And I was thinking about this in terms of culture, and I was going to do a video about it a while ago, but I forgot. Um, Kanye, he changed, he had his name legally changed to Ye. Right. And if you watch that documentary, when Kanye, there was a mistake on the lineup when Kanye was going to, I forget where he was going, but it said Kanye instead of Kanye West. And Kanye was talking about it. He was like, he, they just said Kanye. They just said Kanye. Don't nobody know who Kanye is. They needed to have Kanye West. Jermaine Dupree. Don't nobody know who Jermaine is. They say Jermaine Dupree. Put some respect on it. Call me by my name. Right. And then he made this little joke. He said, at some point, he's not even going to need the yet the the West. He said, people will just say Kanye and they're going to know who he is. And then he went a step further in that same dialogue. And he said, one day, they're just going to know him as Ye. That's all they're going to know is because his greatness is going to be enough and large enough where people won't even need to know him by his full government name. They will only know him by yay because of, because essentially because he did what he said he was going to do. He's going to achieve and tap into the greatness that he already knew was inside of him, right? And so your name matters. So what you're saying to yourself matters. Who you're allowing to speak into your life matters. The tape recorder that keeps playing in your mind, it matters. It matters because that all becomes the framework of the name that you identify with and you call yourself. See, it matters. See, this is why you can't say I am and then put any old crazy thing after it. You can't. And I tell my kids this all the time. If we're reading a book and it's talking about I am and it's not good. I said, you know what? Read it in third person or I, they don't know what third person is. But I said, she is, they are, whatever. But don't attach yourself to the emotions and the negativity that might be in a book that's going to come out good, right? But that's not who you are. The I am matters because the I am is should be reflective of who God is and, and who God has called you to be. And so you have to be careful about that. And so I had to learn that I am not who that child when I was 12 said about me when I was, when I was teased. I had to learn that I'm not who my twin's dad said that I was. I'm not that. 
I am who God says that I am. And so as I had to learn that instead of reciting my resume, when I felt unqualified, I had to recite the truth of God and who God says that I am. Because the only thing that would stop the hiding, the only thing that would stop the circling of the mountain was to have a new identity and experience an identity reset. To reset me and reroute me to who God called me to be. Because all of us, no one gets through life or childhood unscathed. We all have hurts. We all have pains. We all have burdens. But the only way to overcome those things is to have an identity reset to be rerouted back to who God has called you to be. And so I learned actually recently when this, when this whole thing happened, so I shared this epiphany on Facebook, um, like, like maybe a week ago or so. And what I said was, is that I had to lean into who I am in Christ because my identity in Christ is lasting and is at the core of who I am, regardless of my resume or regardless of what anybody else says about me. That is a thing that is unchanging. My identity in Christ. And so I had to lean on Jeremiah 1 and 5. It says, before I formed you in my, in my, in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you to a prophet to the nations. Psalm 139, 14. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Ephesians 2 and 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Let me pause for a second right here because Ephesians 2 says we are his workmanship. We are, uh, we are the clay. God framed us. God knitted us together in our mother's womb. It was such an intimate thing where he created us, right? We see in Adam and Eve, the story of Adam and Eve, when God literally blew the breath of life into Adam's lungs. And if you think about CPR, it's intimate. Like before they created those different things, like it was like lip mouth to mouth, right? God was mouth to mouth with Adam to blow life into him. And so this is what God did with us. He knitted us together. He like, you know, with the potter and the clay, he did all of that. And so if God is for you, who can be against you? If God called you qualified, who can call you unqualified? And then the other thing that I love about Ephesians 2.10 is it said that created in Christ Jesus for good works, for good works. Some of you are shrinking back from the good works that God has called you to do because of trauma based upon what other people have said about you or things that you have even said about yourself. And you're not doing the good works that God prepared for you before the foundation of the world. Things that only you can do, things that he uniquely called for you to do that you're not doing because you're having an identity crisis and you're focused on an identity and walking in an identity that is not of God. It's not of God. And this is what I had to learn. I, when I originally um, was changed my focus in my business to focus on single moms, it was coming from a place of proving. It was coming from a place of I'm going to prove the statistics wrong. I'm going to prove that man wrong. Ladies, let's get united with Beyonce songs going in the background. Like all the women who are independent, right? You know, all of those songs to prove. To prove. But if we're resting in Christ, what do we have to prove? Nothing. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins so that we can walk, live life and have life more abundantly for us to be able to do the good works that he has called us to do for us to break free from the strongholds of sin, shame, lack, uh, you know, all of that stuff. Right. So who do we have to prove anything to who? And so if you have, if you're having an identity crisis, meaning your identity isn't rooted in the Lord, then what are you doing? How do you even know what you're supposed to be doing? Right? How do you know? What are you working on? Because God has uniquely called and equipped you for good works that he prepared before the foundation of the world. He has uniquely ordained for you to reach certain people. And if you're hiding, if you're shrinking back, how are you going to do it? Right? This is why we need an identity reset. This is why. 
And so Ephesians 3.12 says, In whom we have boldness and access with the confidence through our faith in him. So if we're in Christ, we should be bold as lions. We should not be shrinking back. We should not be hiding. Yes, sometimes life hurts. Sometimes you go through stuff and it hurts. And it's important to be able to heal so you can get back up again through therapy and Jesus healing, right? A wonderful combination. And so what I realized is that I am who Christ says I am. I'm created to do good works and it is way past time for me to walk in them and stop hiding. And I say that to you as well. It is way past time for you to start walking in the good works that God has ordained for you to have. Because I want you to understand that if you are shrinking back, if you're hiding, you're actually doing the work of the enemy because the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And so if you're shrinking back, then he has, then you give him victory to destroy the destiny that God has for you. Don't let him win. And so it's time to make a conscious decision to not allow those who the enemy uses to talk negative to you, to derail you, to destroy your confidence, to speak word curses over you. Don't allow workers of wickedness to destroy your purpose, your destiny. Because I want you to understand, and this stuck with me when I heard it a few years ago. The richest place in the world is the graveyard. It's where all the good ideas, all the breakthroughs, all, you know, the medical advancements. Who knows? The cure for cancer might be there. It's the graveyard where people let their dreams die with them. And there's another saying. It said that people are born, they die at the age of like 18 or 21 but they're not buried until they're like 75. They die at such an early age, not because of a physical death, but of a spiritual death. When they lost their hopes, their dreams, and got derailed from their purpose and they weren't able to get back on it. And so I know that this is a sobering message right now, but I hope also that in this, it is a source of encouragement to let you know that it's not too late. It's not too late. And the fact that that Vivo song just started playing in my mind was so random right now. If you haven't seen the movie Vivo, it's amazing. Uh, But it's not too late to quote Vivo. Uh, It's not too late to do the work that God has called you to do. Each day that you're alive is another opportunity to do the work that God has called you to do. It took me years, years, years to get to this point. And I've said this in other videos and it's kind of weird for me to like share it so openly and publicly. But the Lord has been very clear that he wants me to share my journey of how I overcame in the hopes that it helps you to overcome as well. And so I wanted to leave you with one more scripture before we close out. Uh, 2 Corinthians 10 verses 5 through 6 says, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raise against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. And so when you find yourself speaking negative to yourself, when you find yourself having that old recording tape player of all the negativity, all the mistakes, all the failures, everything that someone ever said that was bad, about you start playing in your mind. What I want you to do is according to 2 Corinthians 10 verses 5 through 6, take these arguments and thoughts captive and say, I take this captive to obey Christ. I destroy the arguments and lofty opinions raised against me. This is not true. This is not who I am. This is not who God called me to be. And I take this thought captive and make it obedient to Christ because guess what? Guess what? uh, Psalm 139.14 says, I praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. That means that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God's works are wonderful. And I know that full well, right? I can say Ephesians 2, I am the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus for good works. Yes, my business idea is going to work. It's created. It's given to me by God. 
Yes, these goals and dreams are crazy or ridiculous, even though somebody else says they are. Why? Because I was created to do good works for God. I'm created to be unique, authentic, hand-molded by God. I'm not meant to fit in. I have boldness, right? Because I am created by God. I am God's workmanship. God gave me a purpose and a plan before he even formed me in my mother's womb. So guess what? That is my identity. Because everything else is fleeting. It's fleeting. I love the book of Ecclesiastes because it talks about a season and all the things that are just like the wind. But the only thing that remains is the truth and the work of the Lord. That's it. That's it. Because there's always going to be somebody with a better resume than you. There's always going to be somebody with more money in the bank than you. There's always going to be someone who has more accolades than you. And so if you base those things on that, when you see someone who has a better resume for, for than you, then who are you? Like, who are you? And so you need to go higher to who God says that you are. And so I hope that this message has blessed you. Leave me some love. Leave me some likes. Leave me a, some comments to let me know how this message has blessed you and how you are going to take this message and use it to walk in the purpose and plan that God has for you. Or who knows, if you're ready to quit your job and transition into full-time uh, entrepreneurship, then make sure you holler at me to create your exit strategy. But also as well, you're not crazy if that is a desire of your heart. It's there because God placed it there. Because he knows that he has more for you on the other side of corporate than he does inside. Because that was just a training ground. So I pray amazing blessings over you. And I pray that this was a sense of hope and a sense of encouragement. Make sure we're connected on social media. I'm on Instagram at FM Phenomenal. Um, and I will drop my contact information in the comments. And so that way we can stay connected all across all forms of social. And yeah, I look forward to talking to you soon.